Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to West Bethany Chapel. It's a pleasure to see those of you in the room and welcome also to those of you who are viewing from home. I'm Yvonne Berge. I'm the VP of Operations and Chief Operating Officer here at Landis Communities. And it's a joy to introduce our special guest today, Steve Shedler. So Steve is an LCSW, that means Licensed Clinical Social Worker, hired in 2020 to lead Samaritan Counseling as their executive director. He came into that role with over 20 years of experience. And I want to read a quote from their board when they welcomed Steve to Samaritan Counseling. I am excited to welcome Steve to the role of executive director. As we navigate our future through an ever-changing world, Steve brings a wealth of experience in strategic leadership and counseling. The board chair also said, Samaritan is all about hope and healing, and now more than ever. As individuals, as families, as communities, that's exactly what we need. And because of that, I couldn't be more thrilled to be coming into Samaritan now and serving in that mission. That was Steve's quote as he joined. And I believe the mission of Samaritan Counseling and Landis Homes are aligned well. Over a year ago, Steve approached Larry Zook and then had a meeting with our leadership team with a proposal to start a conversation and consider a one-year pilot with Landis Homes and Samaritan Counseling that could, and I will add, hopefully, lead to a long-term relationship. We enthusiastically said yes. Once upon a time, we had a behavioral health provider on our campus. That ended probably about eight years ago, and this has been a need for us since then. So after those early conversations of brainstorming, then Becca Johnson and Ann Weaver and others got to work with the team of Samaritan to think about what is it that we need? How do we start this pilot? You want to start, we wanted to start it in a way that was meaningful to our, to our community here and to you. So thank you, Becca, Steve, Ben, Anne, and your teams for doing that work that laid the groundwork for what you're going to hear from Steve today. So Steve, we look forward to hearing more about this pilot. All right, well, thank you so much for that warm introduction. It's an honor to be with you here today. As mentioned, my name is Steve. I'm the executive director at Samaritan Center. Has anyone here ever heard of Samaritan Center before? There's a lot of hands going up. So you already know some of this. Pop, and this is my main pop quiz of the day. Who was the founder and first executive director of Samaritan Center? Jim, Hannah. Jim, if you're here today, can you raise your hand, Jim? Can you raise your hand, Jim? There's Jim, Hannah. Indeed. So, so under, under initially Jim's leadership, uh, and then Gerald, who was the second executive director, Samaritan Center has a legacy of creative, creatively impacting our community, finding solutions to complicated problems, and elevating the conversation around mental health. And uh, in the last couple years, our team was thinking and pondering is like, what else can we do? Where could we have impact uh, over these next years? And more and more, our attention went to older adult mental health. And as we were getting deeper into that conversation, we thought, well, we, you know, we do this work where we credential everyone with Medicare and we work with a lot of older adults, but we still have a lot to learn. And we thought, would, would there be a strategic partner in the community that we could work with and grow with 
and try some things out and, and see what would work best to, to impact older adults, particularly uh, in residential settings. And every time, almost every time I was having these conversations, one name kept coming to the top. It was Landis, Landis Homes, Landis Communities. And uh, as was mentioned uh, about a year ago, I got to meet with Larry Zook and we just had a wonderful time. And we've been slowly, we've been building momentum behind the scenes uh, since then. And that's brought us uh, to this point here today. So um, as, um, as we pondered where we could have an impact in the community, and why, why, older, why did older adult keep coming up in conversations? And we kept hearing some common themes. We heard about access. It's even if you want to get help for some, something that's going on in life, you might try to call and you're getting no, people are getting nowhere. There's, there's no openings. I don't take your insurance, all these different barriers. So we kept hearing about the barriers and we kept hearing other parts of this conversation. And we really were affirmed uh, in, in pursuing this in a deeper way. So after I met with Larry and met with the team here at Landis, we wanted to hear from you all. So we conducted some focus groups. Uh, we pr provided some questionnaires. So did, did anyone here participate in one of our focus groups? Okay. And some of you are watching out there. We ran two focus groups here and one at Landis Place on King. And we also got distributed some questionnaires. Did you happen to complete a questionnaire during that time by chance? Maybe there's some folks out in the world that did that. So thank you for helping us. And we took all of that information and we began to craft uh, what has become a one-year pilot project uh, to provide resources and also to learn. Uh, we'll be uh, collecting information, feedback, and data all along the way to try to create something that's evidence-based and impactful over the long term, okay? So in our conversations, we got, we got deeper and deeper, and we got a, a clearer picture of some of the things that we wanted to do. Now, before I get into the specifics of this, I need to highlight a couple things. One is this project has now been generously uh, funded and supported through a grant with the Faree Foundation. So I don't know if there's anyone from Faree here today, I don't know that they are, um, but we owe them a big thank you uh, to kickstart the funding that's gonna make this project uh, very possible. And I also need to highlight uh, some members of our team at Samaritan. We have a, a task force that formed to help make this possible, and we couldn't be here today without all of their help. So I'm just gonna shout out some of the names of task force members. If you're on the task force and I call it your name and you're here, give a, give a wave so people know who you are. So we have Shay Brown. I don't, I don't think Shay's here today, but some, some of you might know Shay. Uh, Ellen Kanegi. Ellen, thank you, Ellen. Erica Snitzer. Erica's on her way. I don't, oh, there she just walked in the door, on cue even. What time, thank you, Erica. Our timing is amazing. Joanne Morton. Joanne, there's Joanne. Hey, Joanne. Ben Farrow. Thank you, Ben. Ben helps keeps us, keep us organized and keeps our notes and our outlines and our schedule going. Thank you, Ben. We wouldn't be anywhere near being here today without Ben. Uh, and then we have our amazing development team members that help uh, think through how to fund stuff like this. We come with ideas. We're like, hey, we have a great idea. And they're like, well, maybe we can do that. And, and they find a way. So we have Jeannie and Anita. Jeannie and Anita back there. Thank you. Thank you both. Appreciate you. And we have some uh, newer team members. Uh, that We have some newer team members that have joined in recent times. Uh, that'll be a big part of what we're doing moving forward. One of those would be Emily Keener. Emily, there she is, hey Emily, Emily. And um, we have a, gonna have an amazing team uh, helping us with our data. That's gonna include uh, Dr. Alejandra Emil Rosario, who's on our board and is a health researcher for the University of Maryland and has his doctorate from Penn State University. So we're really excited for, for him to help us with the research aspect of this work. Okay. All right. So let's get to the basics here. We're gonna uh, do a phased approach to offering uh, mental health, um, access to mental health resources. So in phase one, there's gonna be three components. There's going to be individual counseling, 
okay? And you all are gonna see this. There's a flyer in the back. You all can grab the flyer, grab more than one if you want, and start to spread that around if you care to. Uh, but that runs through some of the aspects of that a little bit, including the start date for that is January 14th. Also includes the phone number on how to access that, okay? So one-to-one -one counseling. Group counseling is going to start up uh, with, with one to two offerings in February. And there'll also be a monthly education series on a relevant topic uh, regarding mental health. And we'll have a different speakers will be coming on to help with that. So keep tuned for the schedule as that rolls out. And we hope to start that in February as well. We're going to have a uh, resource table and a Q&A table set up uh, here on multiple dates uh, coming down the pike. And uh, that would in involve Tuesdays uh, in November and the last Tuesday here in November, Tuesdays coming up in December and also a couple Fridays in December. Those dates are on your information sheet. You can grab that so you can stop by, say hi to whatever team member is at the resource table, learn more about the offerings, talk about whatever you wanna talk about and find out more about this partnership and what we're doing. So really excited to be having that available to you here uh, leading up to the holidays. So important dates that you're gonna wanna keep in mind, uh, the one-to-one -one counseling starting on January 14th. And again, that phone number is on our sheet there. Uh, groups starting up in the February to March timeframe and monthly educational series starting up in February. Now we're gonna take uh, a, a couple months in phase one and learn a little bit. We're gonna listen uh, to you and learn about um, different feedback and, and different data that we're collecting. And then we'll formulate some offerings for phase two. Okay, so there will be additional offerings coming down the pike later in 2025, okay? Uh, so again, we're, we couldn't be more excited about this project. We really believe in this work. We're hoping this is the beginning of, of a long um, journey of growing in this work, working with you, working with Landis, and perhaps even eventually other communities and spreading this even beyond Lancaster. Uh, our hope is to take what we learn in our pilot project and present that, um, what we've picked up and what we've gleaned and learned and help others do this work as well, okay? So that's, uh, that's the basics. Is there any, any questions or anything that I could answer here as we move towards a, a wrap up and Beck will be up here in a moment. And our team is gonna stay and we're gonna have refreshments which Beck will break down. So we'll be very available to, to talk and ask, ask, answer questions and so on, okay? Thank you, Steve, and thank you, Yvonne, for the introduction, and thank you to everyone who came out to the chapel today, and um, if you would be willing to stay for a time of refreshments over at the Azalea Room, we have some refreshments set up, um, and as you saw pointed out, there are quite a few um, staff persons from Samaritan here today, and they are willing to answer any questions you might have. This is a, a really good time for you to get to know them a little bit. Um, and if you're watching at home and would like to um, come out, please, please do. There is too much food out there for just the people in this room. We need some more appetites. So please come and join us. We'll be down there for a while, so you have plenty of time to get there. Um, and I just, speaking for myself and the residential living team, you know, this has been eight years without an on-site provider, um, and it's, it's truly a need that we see each and every day, and we work hard to bring resources here to residents so that maybe you're not driving any longer, or, you know, you are, but you don't really like going out in the winter. Uh, we don't ever want the ability to access care to be a reason that you don't receive care. Um, and it's especially exciting as I've had a chance to get to know um, persons at Samaritan. Their mission alignment just meshes, as Yvonne shared, so beautifully with Landis communities. And there were, we had lots of meetings, Zoom calls, in-person meetings, where like our thought process, I, it's hard for me to even 
describe how much our team will have talked about something, kind of cast vision for what we think we need, and the people at Samaritan present us this plan, and we're like, that's exactly what we want. So it just has felt that, you know, the Lord has been in this, in this relationship, and we're just really, really grateful that they chose us um, for this pilot, because they could have chosen lots of different places. So grateful that we were selected and excited about what's to come. So thank you for being here today. And now we can all adjourn and go have some snacks together and a time of fellowship. So thank you.